Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. And in this video, I am going to show you my workflow for how I take smart notes inside of Mem. And if you want to learn more about how to take smart notes, be sure to check out our free course. I'll include a link in the description below. Now, let's get to this tutorial. So what I want to show you here is the workflow for taking smart notes in Mem. So you'll see here that I'm actually reading this book perfectly confident. I just finished reading it. And it's all about how we can calibrate our decisions more wisely. And like most people, I highlight and I underline lots of passages. As you'll see here, you can see a couple of different highlights. I typically will tend to put a star by the things that I, know I want to capture. So you can see here a few of these things have stars. Some of them don't <laughs> because you just highlight things that catch your interest or they seem like they might connect to something that you're working on or something you would connect to an existing piece of knowledge. So one of the things that struck me in particular while I was reading this book was this idea of single point prediction forecasting. So what is that? It basically, the idea is typically when organizations or individuals forecast something like product sales or how much time something is going to take, they usually give it a single number instead of a range. And it turns out there are a number of problems with this. So you can see here, I have these two core ideas or three different ideas that he talks about in this book, which are the various problems with single point prediction forecasting. So that's the first step. The next step is then to put this aside and I keep the book by me, but then what I will do is I will actually write a quick reminder of what this note was about along with the paint jumper. And this is the first step before we get anything into mem and convert it into a literature note. Every now and then, sometimes the title of my literature note will be the exact same as this, but keep in mind, these notes, these pages don't actually go into mem, which is why I recommend that you actually just have some sort of physical notebook. And I also recommend that you just keep a separate notebook for what are called your fleeting notes. And so they're fleeting because they're just reminders of the thing that you want to remember. So I write them down and then once I'm done writing them down, that's when the next part of the stage begins. And that's when I start entering these notes and processing them inside of them. So let's get to that part. So in the first part of the video, I showed you how I took fleeting notes where I wrote down basically one sentence, capture the main idea inside of the book that I want to do a smart note for, or I want to create a literature note for. And you'll see here that I have a couple of different notes that I've added. So what I do is I just write this one sentence. What we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add each one of these notes to the inbox. So why do I add them to the inbox? Well, one of the reasons I add them to the inbox is because that way it helps me know that these things are a priority that I need to take care of today and I don't forget about them. Also, the thing is that when you put things in the inbox, it's a lot nicer to be able to snooze them because let's just say you can't really remember the concept or you, you know, don't have time to get to it today then what happens is you can actually snooze it and come back to it later, but then it'll still show up in your inbox and just doesn't get buried in the timeline. So I'm going to add one more smart note or two more for my notes from today. And so we're going to have one for expected value calculations. And then we're going to add one more. And now that we've added them to the inbox, we can actually use the inbox as our place to process each one of these notes and rewrite them in our own words to turn them into literature notes. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see here in just a second what it looks like when you have this turned into a literature note. What you're seeing now is a finalized literature note. You'll see here that I wrote the concept in my own words. And you can see here that this is the verbatim quote from the source, and this is my version. Now, there are a couple of things worth paying attention to here. You'll notice here that I actually combined a bunch of different bi-directional links. This actually was a link that had nothing to do with this book in particular, but it was from a, another literature note or another note. 
And one of the things that happens during this process as you are using your different smart notes is that you will end up coming up with new ideas, all of which become your permanent notes. So this might have been a permanent, for example, and you'll see here that I have the quote, as I mentioned, and then if I click here, you'll see that I actually have all the verbatim quotes from the source. Now, for the purposes of this video, I actually imported all the notes just so you could see this, but typically what I will do is I will actually go through and create all my literature notes for a particular book first. And the very last step is importing all of these notes from Breedwise or whatever tool you use to capture your book notes and then adding the quotes into your literature notes. So just to recap this process, the first step is to capture fleeting notes in your notebook based on the things that you underline and highlight. The next step is to create one map for each literature note and you're going to just add that note to your inbox. And then step three is really where the bulk of work happens. That's where you're going to process, synthesize, and rewrite that note in your own words. And at the bottom of that mem, you're going to create a link to another mem with your original source material. So that would be the verbatim quotes from the book. And finally, the last thing you're going to do is import the notes from Readwise into mem with those quotes and then add the quote from the source to the relevant literature note. And just as one last reminder, then what you end up with is a note that looks somewhat like this. So what this ends up doing is it reinforces your understanding of the things that you've read, but it also enables you to make connections between your idea and come up with new ideas. And those new ideas end up being other bi-directional links, which then become your permanent notes. And the thing that I always tell people is when you're writing these notes and trying to connect ideas, the best way to think about this is what you want to do is see if you can complete a sentence in one note with the title of another note. So you can see here that I've done exactly that, right? So it says when we don't use a single point prediction forecast, it's much easier to anticipate worst case scenarios to prevent them. So you'll notice this is a note in and of itself, even though there's nothing in this note right now, but then you can see here that this is another note as well. And this is actually another note from this book. Um, and you can see here that I've connected notes from this book as well. And that is the basic workflow of how you take smart notes and as always, if you want to learn how to take smart notes, check out our free course on how to take smart notes. I'll include a link in the description below. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments.